of the earth. The earth is a part of the solar system and the solar system is a part of a galaxy and many galaxies together form the universe. The earth that we live in is in a solar system. A solar system is a gravitationally bound system of the sun and the objects that orbit around it directly or indirectly. So basically there is the sun in the center and many objects surround it or revolve around it and that is what is called a solar system. Our solar system was formed 4.5 billion years ago and from a, a, a ball of dust and gas. Now as I told you the objects that revolve around the sun, let's name them, okay? So firstly what do we have? We have the planets, then dwarf planets, then we have the natural satellites. Come, uh, Moving over, we have astro asteroids, uh, meteorites and comets. First of the planets, we all know the number of planets in the solar system. So why don't you try telling it? Yes, we have eight planets in the solar system. So let's name them now, right? We have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. So those are the eight planets of the solar system and they are determined according to their distance from the sun. We have Mercury the, to the nearest to the sun and Neptune furthest from the sun. So since Neptune is the furthest from the sun, we can also classify another thing which is the coldest planet and the hottest planet. The coldest planet is Neptune since it's furthest from the sun. The further it is from the sun, the cooler it gets. And Mercury is uh, not the hottest planet, Venus is because Venus has a thicker atmosphere than Mercury which makes it the hottest planet and Mercury the second hottest planet. Moving on by observing this picture, another thing that's clear is the biggest and the smallest planet. Jupiter is the biggest planet and Mercury is the smallest planet. Let's uh, look at a special feature in one of the planets here. What is it? It's a characteristic feature. And Saturn here, what does it have? What makes it different from the other planets? Yes, Saturn uh, here has a visible ring around it yes uh, so Saturn is the only planet with a visible ring around it uh, what is another special a very unique planet here yes we have the earth the earth is the only planet with life in it why so yes because it has air weather conditions perfect weather conditions and water now the earth is called the blue planet why Okay, because it has a large amount of water and all this water makes it look blue when uh, you look at the earth from space or moon. So it basically looks blue and that is why it's called the blue planet. So earlier we had a planet called Pluto. But is it a planet now? No, it's a dwarf planet. What are dwarf planets? Dwarf planets are celestial bodies that orbit around the sun. They have enough mass to sustain or have a circular shape but they are just almost circular and they are not completely mm, circular. Then what, what makes a dwarf planet a dwarf planet and not a planet? Yes, it is that dwarf planets do not clear the, neighbor, the neighborhood of their orbit. Now, let's uh, moving on, let's look at the examples of dwarf planets. We have Ceres, Iris and Pluto, exactly. Now, let's, we all know what is the moon. What is the moon? The moon is, a, a, is an object that revolves around our Earth. And that is what makes the moon a natural satellite. A natural satellite is, so why don't you try telling the meaning? according to what I just said about the moon. Yes, the, a natural satellite is a small body that orbits around a bigger body. So basically that's what makes moon the natural satellite of the earth. But the moon is not, uh, sorry, the earth is not the only uh, planet with natural satellites. 
All planets except Mercury and Venus have natural satellites. Firstly, Earth has one satellite. Mars has two satellites. Jupiter has 63 satellites. Saturn, 61 satellites. Uranus has 27 satellites. And Neptune has 13 satellites. So what is the planet with the most amount of natural satellites? Exactly, Jupiter. It has 63 satellites. So just try to recover it and uh, try to memorize it because it's not so bad to have more knowledge. Exactly. Now, moving on, we're going to look at what are comets. Now, comets are basically snow-like icy balls that are very small. Now, just imagine what happens when an icy ball goes near the sun or goes near heat. Obviously, it starts to melt. So, in here, comets, they start to warm up and they release gas. Now, this gas, this process is called outgassing. And when they release this gas, it looks like it has a tail before it or after it, according to where the comet is going to. Now, this co these comets are not always around the orbit of the sun. It, it spends billions of years in the Kuiper's belt. What is the Kuiper's belt? It is where most comets stay. Now, um, the most prominent comet is the Halley's Comet. Why is it prominent? Because we can see it with our naked eyes. And uh, when, so the next doubt is, uh, when can we see it exactly? We can see it every 75 or 76 years with our naked eyes. That's a very, uh, it's going to be a very good experience if we can see it. So, moving on, we have asteroids. In this image right here, you can see that asteroids look like rocks, right? So they are small rock-like structures, smaller than planets. Now, moving on, let's look at how many asteroids we have. We have 26,000 asteroids and uh, most asteroids are located in the asteroid belt. Now, where is the asteroid belt located? Asteroid belt is in between the orbit of Jupiter and Mars. Now, the largest asteroid is, yes, Ceres. Ceres, yes, it's a, it's a family name. Where else did you hear it? Yes, Ceres is a dwarf planet. But it's also considered an asteroid because Ceres is the only dwarf planet to be located in the asteroid belt. So you can see that it's the largest asteroid. Moving on, let's look at the last thing in the solar system, which is meteorites. What are meteorites? Meteorites are um, uh, lumps of uh, rocks and iron that are found on space. So, basically, uh, meteorites are considered de uh, debris of, of comets. And also, we have 25 million, million meteorites every day falling on the Earth's atmosphere. So, 25 million every day and we do not even have one asteroid seen on our winters. Why? Yes, because once it falls onto the Earth's atmosphere, the third layer of the atmosphere, which is it? Try naming it. Exactly. It's, it starts with ME and it gives a hint. What is it? It is the mesosphere. The mesosphere protects us from meteorite showers. Now, meteorites and meteors are similar words. What do you think? They have the same meaning as well. But it is not so. Meteors are when meteorites uh, in high speed flame over and warm heat up uh, into the Earth's atmosphere. It looks like a fireball or a shooting star, which makes it look like, sorry, which makes it a meteor. So I hope you understand, understand the difference between meteorites and meteors. Now that sums up, or that is what makes our whole entire solar system. So now, uh, our solar system, although is officially the only solar system in the world, uh, astronomers have found 3,200 uh, different systems with stars and planets orbiting around them. 
stars yes obviously as we all know the sun is a star yes our sun is a, the sun is the star of the solar system and the planets orbiting around it are what we have already stated moving on let's look at another topic and uh, we have the galaxies so before going into that topic let's just recap what we learned in the solar system I, uh, I hope you all understood it. I hope you all could catch up with me. So I'll just say it slowly so that you can uh, remember what I just told. So first off, we had planets. Then we had dwarf planets, natural satellites. We had comets, asteroids and meteorites. Now moving on, we have a galaxy. Now a galaxy, uh, as I told earlier, our solar system is in a galaxy. Now, a galaxy is a cluster of stars. Obviously, we all know about stars because what makes a galaxy beautiful is the stars. And we have the stars, we have the planets, we have dust and gas. Now, a galaxy uh, has billions and trillions of stars. So it has so many stars and that's what makes the galaxy super beautiful. Now, moving on, let's look at the largest galaxy. The largest galaxy is IC1101. So I repeat it, IC1101 is the largest galaxy and does not have many trillions or it does not have one or two trillion. It has 100 trillions of stars. Now, uh, it takes 2 million light years to complete a round of the um, IC1101. So 2 million is very less compared to the measurements that you have listened to earlier in this class. But if you listen, to, if you hear what 1 light year's value is, you will be in awe. So 1 light year is 9 trillion kilometers. So 9 trillion kilometers into 2 million, it makes a very, very, very huge amount. Moving on, let's look at how many galaxies in the universe. In the universe. So earlier as I told you, I told that many uh, galaxies are a part of the universe and we have 125 billion galaxies. Now, our, gal uh, our solar system is in a galaxy. Now, what is that galaxy called? It's called the Milky Way. Milky Way. Why is it called the Milky Way? It's called so because it looks like milk spilled on the sky. So that's why it's, it has the name as Milky Way. And earlier, ancient Romans called it Via Lactea, which means Milky Way or Milky Road. Uh, the Milky Way is believed by astronomers to be 13.51 billion years old, similar to the age of the universe. Now, the Milky Way is a part of 30 galaxies together called the local group. The location of the uh, solar system in the Milky Way is important because the Milky Way is a huge space and our solar system is a very small part out of it. The solar system is in the Orion arm 26,000 light years from the center of Milky Way. And like all things, the Milky Way is also believed by astronomers to come to an end in 4 billion years. How? It is going to collide with another, another galaxy called Andromeda and they will together make a very big galaxy. So, they have already started moving, but it's going to take very long back before they both collide. I hope you all understood. I hope you all do not have any confusion arising in your minds. Once again, let's repeat this. We are very small beings. We are nothing compared to, the, to, compared to how big the universe really is. We are humans on the earth. The earth is a very tiny part of the solar system. This solar system is almost invisible in a galaxy called the Milky Way. Milky Way is a part of 135 billion other galaxies in the universe. This shows how small we really are. So what do we learn today? We learned about the solar system, planets, dwarf planets, comets, 
asteroids, natural satellites, meteorites. And then we looked at the galaxy, our Milky Way and all. Hope you all enjoyed today's class and thank you.